Dan Knudsen and Justin Kiggins are graduate students in neuroscience at UC San Diego. They study neurons in the brains of songbirds to learn how they encode and process the songs of other birds. I can record 10 to 40 gigabytes of data uh, in one day. Enter the Neuroscience Information Framework, NIF for short. The program provides researchers such as Kiggins and Knudsen with an easy way to share their data and software tools. We've been working with uh, Anita and some of the others over there at, with NIF to, to get stuff set up appropriately to, to figure out how to manage the data that others have done in terms of avian anatomy and, and connectivity information so that we can get the framework in the NIF that would, would form the backbone for, for what we might be able to do in the future. At its simplest level, it's a search portal across different sources of neuroscience information, uh, specializing in what we call the hidden web. That is information that's contained inside of databases that have been created for biomedical researchers that typically aren't accessed through a Google search. NIF typically logs 15,000 visitors per month. The portal has pinpointed some 2,000 scientific databases relevant to neuroscience. Of those, more than 170 are federated databases, which can be searched directly through NIF with a single query. Data sources, and if we actually click into one of these, so if we look at just the west coast of the United States here, and let's look at Oregon, so right there, we have the University of Oregon is represented by this blue dot, and we have resources such as the NEMO Analysis Toolkit. When we first started, there were very few researchers who were even thinking about data at all. I think that situation has changed dramatically, and we're talking to researcher after researcher who realizes they've lost control even of the data that is coming out of their own laboratory. There's too much of it. NIF has substantial operations at Yale University and Caltech, but its home base is at UC San Diego in the California Institute for Telecommunications and Information Technology, CalIT2. NIF has been one of the most exciting projects at CalIT2 precisely because we're moving into this era of big data. We've got to have a whole new capability for dealing with both data types and the amount of the data. And uh, here at CalIT2, we really look forward over the next few years to a growing NIF uh, as one of our core capabilities. NIF developed an ontology and semantic search mechanism to ensure that queries result in good responses even when researchers from different fields have different ways of defining brain functions. We don't just search for the string, we search for the meaning of the string. NIF is now in year four of a five-year contract with the National Institutes of Health, and it is developing ways to sustain the program after funding from NIH eventually runs out. There's sort of a global uh, responsibility for figuring out how to maintain these new types of communication venues like a NIF. So we're actively working with industry partners, we're working with nonprofits, we're working with other groups to say what are the value of NIF's services and NIF assets. The framework is reaching out to nonprofits whose missions are aligned with NIF's. One example, One Mind for Research, which promotes a culture of data sharing while promoting more dollars for brain research. The two are working on several joint projects, including a landscape registry of biorepositories, those places where tissue or blood samples are stored. Both the Neuroscience Information Framework and One Mind for Research are fellow travelers on a common path towards breaking down silos that exist between data sets and promoting a culture of sharing in neuroscience. One Mind for Research brings with it close links to industry, and NIF is exploring whether a large part of the framework could be self-sustaining like research journals, not just for articles, but also for databases and simulations and models. There is no mechanism equivalent to a journal that you can search through. There was no PubMed for these things, so we essentially created the search portal through which you could get to all these individual efforts. Anita Bandrowski points to the value researchers see in NIF and the time and cost it saves them. Imagine going to 150 different databases on a day and asking, what are all of the brain parts that you have represented? That would take a very long time. For NIF, this is a very simple process. All the feedback that we get, get tells me that there is a fundamental problem that NIF has 
solved to some degree. Many of the framework's advances could be replicated in other disciplines. We have designed the system modularly enough that we should be able to take pieces of the ontology out and bring in another ontology, take some of the rules out and bring, bring in other rules. And the system just should function with some customization, but not a whole lot of customization. As long as the core mission of the NIF is fulfilled, which in our view is to make as much scientific data as open and as accessible as possible, then we really don't uh, mind what entity or combination of entities allows that to happen. For the foreseeable future, though, the Neuroscience Information Framework will remain a one-of-a-kind resource, helping researchers in neuroscience make the most of the growing deluge of data around them.